How fast can you get a weapon from level 1 to level 20? How fast can you complete an entire reforge of a weapon class? Those are the questions we're going to be asking ourselves today. Hello everyone, my name is Trevor, I go by the Mr. Trails, and welcome to the channel. So one of the things people tend to do in their free time during the end game of Dauntless is to indulge in speedrunning, the most common form of which is Dauntless Trials, which I've gone into a lot of depth about in the past, why there were other things you could do to speedrun Dauntless back in the old patrol and pursuit system, but nobody really actively did them. Perhaps that's only slightly changed now with Dauntless Reforged. Captain Maelstrom was inspired by players he ran into on Reddit to do a new form of speedrunning that we have available to us. How fast can you complete a whole Reforged rank, taking your weapon from level 1 to level 20 in Dauntless? Those on Reddit claimed that it couldn't be done in even a single day for that matter without spending a ton of money on bounty tokens, or without a squad of friends to help you kill the behemoths faster. Setting out to prove them wrong, Captain Maelstrom decided to do a speedrun of reforging his axe from level 1 to 20, where he wouldn't use any bounty tokens. He also didn't want to use tonics and catalyst for this run, because in reality that would have a lot of extra preparations done before the run. And he was going to do all of this while fighting behemoths solo as much as he could control. The main strategy for this run was to get to Hades Reach as fast as possible, then start abusing the regular hellions that are found there. This was on patch 1.5.0 which didn't penalize you as much for fighting behemoths at a level slightly below yours. So, because Hellions could spawn between levels 15 to 18 there, it was the absolute gold mine for experience leveling in the game. As if you're up against a level 18 Hellion when you're on the last level at 19, you're only missing out on experience equal to one level lower behemoth. And now as we're on patch 1.5.1, if you do your leveling through the hunting grounds, this is still the place where you want to end up at. Cap ended up with a time of 4 hours 27 and a half minutes, with a slight asterisk to it. He didn't keep it 100% bounty free, claiming 3 bounties on the last level that gave him 1600 total weapon experience. But his intentions were to prove that under 5 hours without bounties was possible, as that's about how long he estimated that a reforge would take while doing it for free. In patch 1.5.0 while level 19, facing off against level 18 behemoth, you gained 95 experience per kill. With a good build and some skill, a modest average kill time for this would be 1 minute per behemoth. Let's say that he would have to slay 17 more behemoths to get to level 20 without these bounties. Then let's modestly say it'd take another minute in between each fight to find another behemoth for 16 behemoth transitions. This would add another 33 minutes to the run, meaning that Captain was indeed on pace to get the no bounty whatsoever goal done in 5 hours. And if you still don't enjoy the claiming of the bounties, you can still at least do this for free. Each day when you flip your coin, you'll be given 4 bounty tokens. It's been this way ever since Ram's Giving, though I'm not sure if the period between Ram's Giving and Frostfall giving it was intentional or not. Anyway. What Cap wanted to prove was that Dauntless didn't become as pay to progress as a lot of people claimed it to be. Still in patch 1.5.0, a few days later he decided to do the same speed run, but with a lot of bounty tokens instead. His time did reduce to 2 hours and 41 minutes, showing that yes, you can save a lot of time by spending money on bounty tokens, but to the average user, it's not a ridiculous enough of time, at least enough to justify $5 per reforge level. Enter patch 1.5.1, the current patch of the game, after feedback on the experience rates, the dev decided to change how experience was granted slightly. You would be given more experience for fighting behemoths at a higher level than you, but you'd also gain less than 1.5.0 when fighting behemoths at a lower level than you. The maximum benefit and the maximum detriment on both patches capped out at behemoth levels being 5 levels above or below the player. In the 1.5.1 patch, you get 225 experience for a plus 5 level behemoth, where in 1.5.0 you only got 175. This new rate led Cap to wonder if getting it done in under 2 hours was possible with the help of a few bounties. He didn't quite reach that goal, he came up with a 2 hour 20 minute run. But there was another difference between this and the previous run, was that he decided to switch to the escalation game mode around level 15. The 225 experience for behemoths 5 or more levels above you is the rate granted by the hunting grounds. It works a bit different in escalations, but the principle is still the same. In escalations, the maximum experience gain per behemoth is 168 XP. You'll get 168 XP per behemoth in Escalation 1 to 13 from levels 1 to 6, and you'll get 168 XP per behemoth in Escalation 10 to 50 from levels 1 to 14. However, the minimum amount of experience per behemoth in Escalations is only 75, where in the Hunting Grounds it can go as low as 25 for a minus 5 level of behemoth. This means that for the later levels, Escalation was definitely the place to grind. But with a more consistent experience increase than the Hunting Grounds and the ability to play solo to mitigate the potential for random players to affect the speedrun, 
the question became at what point should you switch over to escalation if you wanted to make a two hours or less reforge possible or was there even a point in doing the hunting grounds at all enter me these questions were on my mind after watching maelstrom's recent speed run in the 1.5.1 patch i hypothesized that due to just having a lot more control over the behemoths in general having reliable and predictable hp pools along with the more consistent experience gained when leveling that escalation would be the way to go the whole time however i believe caps starting in the hunting grounds approach might be more applicable to axes specifically since they will still want to swap hunts as little as possible to conserve that level 4 determination meter so over the past couple of days i've been powering through some reforges of my strikers to see just how fast i would be able to do them my first attempt came rather close to maelstrom two hours and 23 minutes there were some major mistakes i made such as queuing up for 10 to 50 escalations a bit too early leading me to failing the hunt a couple of times i didn't make that mistake the second time and i just barely missed getting it done in under two hours and i lost a lot of time at the beginning due to starting off in the hunting grounds perhaps due to the specific island i chose and during this second run i learned an additional strategy that might help me get the run well under two hours but how i would do mine was no holds barred i used as many bounty tokens as i possibly could and i used catalyst and tonics for every single fight and at the time of this video you can actually grind out an insane amount of bounty tokens 100 percent for free since it's frostfall we've got presents scattered around the islands ready and waiting to be picked up you can get a reliable rate of five presents every 75 seconds and loading times being included there by just running around emberthorn cove over and over these presents have a 10 percent chance to contain a premium bounty token which means grinding out a bunch of these by the end of the frostfall event you could very well have thousands of bounty tokens and if you get a large group of players together each person can get drops from the presents everyone spawns in meaning if you all open presents together in your groups then you can profit tremendously from this event i started the run with 46 bounty tokens and actually ended up going through all of those but having 855 more presents available i had to start dropping some later in the run and i gained four from said dropping so 50 tokens in total and at a 10 percent rate of bounty tokens from presents would mean you can get this many bounty tokens for free in two and a half hours less time if you're with friends and if you're mad that i'm chugging tonics and using catalyst i did a recent video on tonic material farming where you can get over 1000 of any resource you want every hour meaning that using tonics and leveling up is not unreasonable with all of this background and explanation done let me give you guys an overview of my most recent run which is perhaps the fastest anyone's completed a full reforge from level 1 to level 20. the run starts off with how it should zero experience on my aether strikers after i've reforged and being placed at level 1. at the start i have no drafted bounties meaning i claim them just after we start the timer the timer started when selecting the private hunt option on the first 1 to 13 escalation and the timer stopped when the sound cue played for my level up between 19 to 20. i had a build for each element pre-made which they experienced a bit of tweaking as the run progressed i start the timer then quickly draft up all of my bounty slots i needed to deal 17.5k damage with a lantern 65k part damage slay two behemoths with a radiant weapon and deal 40k stagger damage these were amazing bounties to start the run off with as using strikers this can all easily be done in a single 1 to 13 escalation so i start off with my radiant striker build easy peasy in every single run i went for full offense i never once equipped parasitic or iceborne that's an advantage escalation has as well passive lifesteal and damage reduction without having to equip them into the build this lifesteal passive has the same lifesteal as running parasitic which is usually enough if you guys were wondering how strong escalation 1 to 13 behemoths are at level 1 on round 1 i kill a shrike in about 16 seconds i have 120 power from the power surge weapon 40 power from my current weapon level the plus 15 power from the slayer's path upgrades and plus four percent power from the seven axe reforges one to 13 behemoths used to have around 300 power but in the reforge system it's possible it's lower as the behemoth hp is paper even at level one after four minutes and 52 seconds on the timer the first escalation concludes which is enough to get you to level three on your weapon claiming the first stack of bounties netted me another 1000 weapon experience pushing me to level four and not even 40 seconds later my next rack of bounties i get two silvers and two bronze and here's where the spicy tech i learned from run two kicks in wound damage bounties are actually a very quick and easy leveling source for a weapon like strikers i learned that slapping on three acidic is enough to complete even the gold bounty for wounding in a single escalation run forfeiting a little bit of dps to grab a bunch of weapon experience from the bounties tends to be worth it and that's the prioritization method i used for the bounties when doing this sort of speed run which of the bounties could i complete in a single escalation run so i'd be able to draft more bounties for the next one it didn't always have to 
to be claiming all four bounties by the end of every single escalation because you'd need some rather impressive RNG for that to be possible. And sometimes the bounties you can pull can be absolute trash in terms of doing them quickly. So in this second stack I ended up with three bounties I'd be able to claim after the escalation as two of them were weapon element specific. I chose Terra Escalation for this whole time for one reason, virulent impact. In the escalations it's in, the question of can I one shot this behemoth is available to be asked. It doesn't mean that it will do that with strikers, but it's still an amp that you want to take. In Terra Escalation, virulent impact is on common rarity when you unlock the node, meaning that sometimes you'll see it every single escalation you do. With the other amps in Terra Escalation, you can amass 100% critical strike chance without even using cunning on your build while still having virulent impact as one of your amps. For the most part, I prioritize damage and critical strike chance for my amps, but because amp selections are somewhat random, you can get a pretty bad pull sometimes. One downside of Terra Escalations is the Terra variants Behemoths, Embermain and Charog, can be a huge pain. Embermain running around the arena for no apparent reason, or a buggy Charog continuously farting on you when it's not supposed to. This is why Maelstrom went for Shock Escalation in his 1.5.1 speedrun, but I believe the benefits of Terra Escalation may outweigh the benefits of Shock. This Reforge run started off absolutely flying due to the bounty RNG as I was level 6 in 10 minutes and 30 seconds, which was already almost 6 minutes ahead of the previous run where I lost a lot of time at the start. Though the next level's time was already coming up fast, due to the nature of this kind of speed run, the amount of time you're ahead or behind by can fluctuate heavily. In this case, the main reason for that would be the points during the run where you claimed your bounties and how much those bounties were worth. Between leveling to 6 and leveling to 7, it looks like I lost 4 minutes of time, but in reality, the previous run, level 7, was claimed about 40 seconds after level 6 due to bounty rewards at the time. This turns right back around in the new run's favor since I now had a good head start on the level 8 split. One of the what I would call most inconvenient bounties was the interrupt behemoth X number of times ones. It's not that the bounty is hard, in fact, it can be easily the best bounty you have to pick from sometimes. But I was using fully offensive builds which meant I would have to hold back if I wanted to even allow the behemoth to do its interrupt in some cases. These bounties are usually a 2 to 4 escalation thing to complete depending on the behemoths and how long I let them live for. I think it's much better to just let a behemoth do one interrupt if it's already in a situation where it would do one anyway than just kill it off. After 5 1 to 13 escalations, a spicy gold bounty and a few silver and bronze bounties later, I was at level 10. 26 minutes and 46 seconds to do so, and this was far ahead of my other run-throughs at this point. But as you can imagine, going from level 1 to level 10 is a lot faster than going from level 10 to level 20. Once I hit level 11, this is when I decided to go for escalation 10 to 50. Doing 10 to 50 escalations at this point meant that I would gain double the experience from doing them versus doing a 1 to 13 escalation for not taking double the time. I also had a pretty good set of bounties at this point, making it so I could start off the 10 to 50 escalations going full damage without having to worry about interrupting anything either. Now, obviously I ended up questioning this decision when I died twice in the second round, but in this particular run I decided to opt for 6 discipline on my build and it paid off well by getting virulent impact. Round 4 as an escalation can be brutal, especially when you've got only one revival stim left at your disposal, but I just took things slow trying to calculate mine and the behemoth's movements accordingly. Rezakiri is certainly a pain if you've got it on round 4, but was made more manageable in this run because I happen to be using an umbra weapon. For the next run I ended up using one of the weirder builds I ended up going with during this challenge. A tenacious scar and half-life wounding three cunning build should about sum up how weird it was. There were plenty of weird build haptics as prioritizing bounties ended up making me slide acidic into a lot of places where it shouldn't be. After the next escalation run after that one, I was able to claim four bounties, getting me to level 15 in just 62 minutes. Again, keep in mind level 15 is where things really start to slow down. You need almost 2,000 experience or more per level at this point, and this is when you start to gain less experience from the behemoths. And the next rack of bounties was all bronze, but was a set that I would be able to complete in a single escalation, which unpleasantly I had a Scorched Stone Hellion on round 3 with Behemoth Blitz and the Cursed Grookrooks. This was horrible in previous runs because I wasn't running Aether Drive Tonic with Pangar Lantern, but in this run I made sure it was on every build. I created a detailed breakdown of each escalation in the run, detailing each build used, as well as the bounties active and claimed in the description. Do let me know if you guys want to see a condensed version of just the gameplay for your own analytical purposes. If there's enough interest in it, I'll try to upload as much of it as practical. So once I hit level 17, I made that very disturbing realization that I didn't think I had enough bounty tokens. A good chunk of time was added to the run, around 5 or so minutes, just due to worrying about the number of bounty tokens I had. I'd say if you want to be sure, bring 60 tokens in. If you want to be really, really sure, bring 75 in. But I started dropping 
scoop some presents in Ramsgate before Agaris and when I could, drop some while waiting to select an amp. It also certainly didn't help my final time to run this tenacious Skarn Half-Life wounding three cunning build for a second time during the run. I feel like with how cursed the build ended up being, I was losing more time in combat than the time it saved on the bounties. But then again, I did finish the run almost perfectly with only 49 experience being wasted. I had made it to level 18 in 91 minutes with the light at the end of the tunnel. Entering the level 19 split, I had four active bounties and zero tokens remaining. I dropped 50 presents during the run, gaining four tokens. Part of this hassle came from actually throwing away a bounty because all of the options were horrible, but what helped seal the deal on sub two hours at this point was getting virulent impact on the last three runs. My final time for this run was one hour, 56 minutes, and 39 seconds. This run in particular could have been around one hour, 53 or 52 with the bounty concerns factored out. If you got extremely good RNG and bounties, amps, and crit high rolling, I'm pretty sure this could even be done in less than 90 minutes at some point down the road. Though since this would be one major RNG grind of a speedrun, I doubt people are going to want to try pushing it that far. But there you have it, I was able to complete an entire reforge of a weapon class, getting it from level 1 to level 20 in under 2 hours. And I was able to do it all without spending any money with what's available to you in today's game. The event certainly helped out with this, and I would suggest grinding the event heavily with other friends if you can. Drop parties are being hosted in the Dauntless official Discord pretty often, so check there if you're looking for people to grind with. If you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful, consider leaving a like. And if you enjoy Dauntless content and are not subscribed already, consider subscribing to the channel. Here I post Dauntless content every week. I've been Trevor, I go by the Mr. Trails, and I will catch you guys next time.